Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Dave from StructureStrength.com and today, believe it or not, we're gonna talk about whether or not Matt Fraser, often called Fraser, uh, but I believe it's actually Fraser, will win the 2020 games. Now, I know the 2019 games just ended, but here we are, we're entering the season already. The Open's around the corner, sanctioned events, there's already qualifiers going on. It is crazy, it's almost like there's no off season for anyone that participates in the sport of CrossFit and just doesn't do the normal GBP CrossFit. Now, Matt Fraser this year, it almost seemed like he had a chink in his armor because Noel Olsen did really, really well. Um, some people say if he didn't get that penalty, yada, yada. Well, he did get the penalty, so it is what it is, right? Um, so the question is, why or not, Matt, if there's blood in the water and people think they can beat Matt Fraser. Now, going into the 2019 games, everyone thought that Pat Vellner would be the guy that was going to give uh, Fraser the run for his money. And Vellner wasn't there for the top 10, so we won't know that. That's what happened in the 2019 games. Whatever you're going to say about the cuts, the cuts were there. People knew there was cuts going into it. It changed how you're going to participate in these events. It's not a, just a survival. It is you got to go for it and win. And you saw Pat do that in the first workout. He started hitting failure in the snatches. So don't worry about last year's games. 2020, things have changed already. Uh, there's three events before there's actually a cut down to 50%. They're doing every second counts, old school style CrossFit competition. And they're going to move forward from there. We don't know about the cuts, but it looks like the way that sets you up. Um, is that the 10 cut is going to happen on Saturday night instead of Saturday morning. It might favor some athletes. Who knows? Now, when it comes to Matt Fraser getting beat, I don't think he's going to get beat in 2020 because I think there's going to be more events. And with more athletes, it favors him. It helps him out. When he gets cut down early like it did this past year, it actually hurts him. Um, just the type of athlete it is. Just kind of, it can help, but it mostly hurt him because he was coming from behind, right? So the more events, the better Matt does. The more stuff you throw at him, the better he does. If you want to give him 20 tests, awesome. Just because he's so well-rounded and nothing is his wheelhouse anymore, uh, he's just pretty stinking good at everything. The more you throw at him, the better he's going to be. Whether that's crazy fancy stuff or if it's the traditional CrossFit Mekon style work, he does well. Uh, swimming, running, biking, uh, sandbags, strongman stuff, uh, ruck run, Oslo course, all that stuff he does pretty well. So in 2020, I think there's going to be more events. The cuts are going to all come later, which all helps him because the more people he can put between him and whoever he's trying to beat, the better. If there's going to be a year to beat him, I think this year was it because only having 10 athletes for most of Saturday and most of Sunday and him coming from behind, it created less opportunities for him to really win because even on that pegboard, dumbbell snatch, clean and jerk workout with double unders, he beat Noah Olsen, I think, by over a minute, but Noah Olsen still came in second place. If he had 20, 30 people there with him doing that workout, those people would fill that gap and allow him to get ahead even more. So is Fraser beatable? Absolutely. Everyone can get beat. Is 2020 the year he's going to get beat? I think that now that this kind of test 2019 with the cuts is done, Cross is going to correct some of the things that people would say they didn't like or errors in the games. Um, I think it's going to be really, really hard. I believe that Fraser's going to win 2020 outside any like injury or kind of freak accident during it, which can definitely happen. But the way it looks, he's just at a different level right now, um, which is, it's actually great that he almost came in second this year because it made everyone feel like he was catchable. Because sometimes when someone's so dominating, whether that's Froning, Fraser, Tia, people never try to beat them. They, they're okay with coming in second. They're okay with coming in third because they just seem so far away. So I think this year might've put a little blood in the water. The sharks are out there. So I'm excited to see him get pushed, but we also saw this year when he's in a position of pressure, he rises and he does well. There was always talk about how he's always been like so far ahead. He never has been in a pressure position. They must've forgot about the Ben Smith year where he was in a pressure position. He fell apart a little bit um, and that hurt him, but mental strength, Frazier seems to have it. He hadn't lifted over 340 pounds all year. He cleaned 380, unfreaking believable. It was incredible, right? Uh, coming from behind, just winning every event that he needed to. 2020, I'd put my money on Matt. I'd put my money on Tia too. It's gonna be a hard year to try and tackle the champions, all right? Love to hear what you think. Whether or not you agree with me, it's perfectly fine. Comment below. Uh, if you believe that structure strength can help you get better for the 2020 or the 2021 open season, click the link below, check it out. We're here to help you. Thank <laughs> you.